Good to go. Hey, folks. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, for this uh, marketplace uh, session. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, Brocade's uh, NFA orchestration uh, using Open uh, OpenStack Tacker project. Uh, my name is uh, Sridhar Ramaswamy. Uh, I'm a principal engineer in uh, Brocade. And with me is uh, Jeff, Jeff Remeter. Yeah. He's a solution architect uh, in Brocade um, in our BU. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. So the agenda is uh, we're going to talk about, in general, this OpenStack Tacker project, uh, what it is, what is the scope. Uh, and we're going to talk a bit more on the features and how the, some of the features function as a workflow. Uh, and we will move on to do a demo, which is probably the main piece. I'll probably uh, we'll spend maximum time in uh, showing how this project functions, uh, how this whole feature uh, goes, and kind of wrap it up with uh, uh, what we plan for this project down the line. So with that, uh, so what is Tacker? So some of you might be familiar with this uh, uh, diagram. It's a HC Mano architecture diagram. And what Tacker project uh, is, is essentially, uh, it's an orchestration project that geared towards the, the red box that you see around VNF manager and uh, NFE orchestrator. So those are the two, two components that, uh, that's in scope for uh, OpenStack Tacker. Uh, the, our initial feature sets are mostly gear, geared towards a VNFM, which is in the bottom. But uh, as we add features, we are progressing up to an, uh, an NFE orchestrator. So the, again, um, many of these things, uh, again, this architecture diagram comes from the HC, uh, the HC NFE uh, uh, organization. And the theme for this OpenStack Tacker is uh, to align with that architecture. I know there are, the, the word OpenStack and orchestration is used fairly uh, widely, uh, but the scope for OpenStack Tacker, it's an HC Mano orchestration solution. So some of the features, uh, if you're familiar with the basic orchestration, uh, the, the main few building blocks that's uh, required in a VNFM uh, is what something that Tacker supports today. Uh, there are features like uh, the VNF catalog, which is essentially uh, is used to onboard Tosca templates for VNF, uh, VNF descriptors. Uh, this is something spec'd out in uh, HC Mano. Uh, so we uh, support that where you would, first thing you would do is basically onboard your uh, VNF. And we have other basic lifecycle uh, management features, basically instantiating a VNF, uh, through the life of the uh, VNF, uh, instantiation, termination. Uh, there are other aspects where some of the templates uh, need not be fully art coded, and uh, it can be actually parameterized. So this feature is something we introduced recently in Liberty. Uh, so, so beyond that, uh, we made sure the features that are uh, really relevant uh, for the deployers, which includes uh, the VNF should be uh, should be uh, instantiated with, with the initial configurations. And sometimes there are two ways to get the configurations in. Like one could be through user data where things get in injected during boot up process. The other mechanism that we have is uh, uh, you, the instantiation finishes, and there are functions that you need to do on the VNF, uh, either through REST API, or we are actually uh, going to demonstrate a case where you can use an SDN controller and use NetConf Yang to actually configure uh, the VNF that just came up. So now, uh, beyond, beyond configuration, we also have a basic health monitoring, where you can monitor uh, the KPIs uh, for the VNF that you just instantiated. Uh, and then if there is any, uh, any uh, events uh, in the health, attacker can actually uh, yield, uh, basically by respawning or other methods, it can actually uh, rectify the situation for that particular VNF. So I'm going to briefly walk through uh, the architecture and the workflow. So this is a, I know it's a fairly big colorful chart here. Uh, so it has different components uh, to, uh, be, through, through the functionality that I just talked about. Uh, and one thing I want to stress again is uh, Tacker is like another open, any other OpenStack project. Uh, it has, it's an, it's, a, its own API server. 
where there's a CLI, there's an API, and of course we have a Horizon dashboard. That's something you would see. So I'll quickly walk you through the workflow. So the first thing you would do here is uh, you need to onboard the VNFs. So again, the OpenStack Tacker project envisions uh, this to be a general purpose VNF manager. So you can use it for, it's not tied to a particular VNF type, like a router or a DPI VNF. It, it can be used, broadly used for any VNF type. So that's our focus, so that's our mission. And another thing is it's, again, being an open source and open stack project, it needs to be multi-vendor, right? They kind of go hand in hand, but it's actually uh, important to uh, take that into account that this catalog can uh, have multiple vendors uh, VNF, and we're going to show a few uh, around using uh, the Brocade VNF, but it can be from any, any vendor VNF. So, so that's the first step. So once it, things in the catalog, you can actually instantiate. So we use uh, uh, EAT. Um, so that's, uh, again, there are different drivers that you can, you can potentially plug, uh, but current, current default is EAT. We also have NOVA, and in fact, we envision there might be other newer uh, infra drivers down the line to, to orchestrate. This could be even containers, perhaps, down the line. So, so this would actually place the VMs uh, in the target VM. And uh, so, the, so you can imagine there are multiple VNFs, and, and we're going to demonstrate uh, you know, using Brocade VNF in this, in this uh, session. So once the VNF is up, the first next thing uh, you want to know is uh, how the VNF configured with the, for, for the services it's supposed to provide. That's, so that's, that's uh, the next step. Uh, and Tacker has a management driver framework where it can actually use uh, a management driver either to directly configure the VNF, or in this case, we're going to demonstrate how it can use a uh, controller, an SDN controller, to actually configure. Uh, so we're going to use the Brocade uh, uh, SDN controller, which is a commercial version of an uh, open daylight controller. So that's what we're going to see. And it will, in turn, use uh, uh, Netconf Yang to configure. So there is also a plan to do SFC once the VNFs are up. That's still under development. But that we envision that will follow the, uh, the configuration um, of the VNF. And the other key aspect of Tacker is, again, monitoring. This is important. Instantiating is one thing, but having uh, the operators know what the VNF is doing and how it is doing is very, very critical. So this is something we, we enable where you can actually uh, have your... Uh, so there are a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, Tacker has few inbuilt monitoring capability that are simple, but they are ready to go. You can get, make use of. But your VNF health might be determined in different ways, right? you might need to probe your servers running in your VNF to actually determine the health. So this is something we enable uh, through the TACA framework where you can bring in your own um, management uh, monitoring driver and TACA will just basically make use of that to determine thumbs up or thumbs down. And uh, if there is an issue, it can actually detect that and uh, heal the situation. Right? Perhaps respawn is something we support today. So with that background, and uh, I will hand it over to Jeff to continue the demo. Cool. OK, just here we are. Yeah. Here we go. Cool. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> It's one second, folks. What is the this one, mm. perhaps? Oh, actually, try the other one. Oh, you can try it. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it should work. Yeah. Just uh, duplicate. Oh, uh, now do the okay. other one. Yeah. Shit. This is good. Did you check to see if this works? <laughs> Sorry? Did you check to see if this one works? Yeah, this uh, should work. OK. All right. All right. So thank you, Theodore, Sridhar. Sure. Um, so as Sridhar mentioned, uh, I actually have two demos here today. Uh, the first one is going to show uh, full uh, 
lifecycle management of a Brocade V router, VNF. And we'll take a look at some of the features that, that Sridhar mentioned, uh, one being the management driver. So we use a BSC management driver, which will help connect this VNF to a Brocade SDN controller. Uh, and we'll take a look at some of the, uh, the monitoring features that you mentioned. Um, and so we can see what happens, uh, how Tacker monitors the VNF, and how uh, it can respond and do uh, perform certain actions in case it detects there is a failure. Uh, and then the second demo will be um, demonstrating how Tacker can not only provision uh, simple VNFs, but also highly complex ones as well. Uh, and in this case, we'll be uh, showing how we can provision a uh, Brocade Connectum virtual Evolve Packet Core uh, through OpenStack Tacker. Okay. So I'll just move straight into the demos here. Um, yeah, so the first one we'll be provisioning, we'll, we'll take a look at how we can provision a, a Brocade vRouter VNF. And uh, we'll do this all through the, the OpenStack dashboard here. So if we log into the OpenStack dashboard, uh, Tacker has a NFV section through in, uh, within Horizon. And the first thing we can do here is take a look at the VNF catalog, right? This is a listing of all the different VNFs that users can deploy through Tacker. Okay. So the first step we want to do really is just onboard a new VNF. Uh, this will be for the vRouter. Um, so it can be, this is an example of the Tosca template used to describe this particular VNF. So if you look at the left side, this is the template that specifies some global parameters. Uh, and then there's a section specific to each of the VDUs. Uh, so there is a VDU here. Uh, and it has contains some information like the virtual machine image. It's going to pull from the glance database, uh, the instance type, or the flavor. Uh, and then if you notice where the red arrow is shown, there is the BSC management driver. So this VNF, upon instantiation, uh, the, the BSC management driver will actually mount this VNF on the SDN or Open Daylight controller. Uh, and then from there, it can be further managed and configured through Open Daylight. Uh, and then if you look uh, a little bit further down, uh, there's the monitoring policy. Uh, so in this case, it's a simple ping driver, which will, in the background, do pings to this VNF. And if it detects a, any kind of failure, it can uh, do a uh, certain action. And in this example, it will do a respond. Um, uh, the two short files on the right there, on the upper right, uh, in case you want to separate data from the actual VNF descriptor template, you can create a separate parametrized uh, file that can be used for each instance of a particular VNF. So we have some, some user data parameters uh, in that file. And then on the bottom, we have a BNS, BSC configuration uh, file, which uh, it basically contains some of the information required for Tacker to authenticate with the Open Daylight controller, uh, a, a, as well as log into the, the vRouter itself. Okay, So that's basically the template describing this particular VNF. So uh, first step we want to do is uh, onboard this VNF into the Tacker database. So we can click on the onboard VNF button in the VNF catalog. We can give this uh, entry a name. And then we're just going to browse and upload that YAML file that we were just looking at. Okay. And so now this template is being uh, stored in the Tacker database. And so you can see it there. Uh, the next section, the VNF manager, is where we can deploy an instance of any particular VNF. Uh, so now we want to deploy the vRouter VNF. We can click on Deploy. We give this particular instance a name. We call it vRouter Demo. We select the uh, entry in the catalog that we just uploaded. Uh, and then there's two other sections, right? The one is for the parameterized value file that we just looked at. And then the configuration requirements for, for the Open Daylight controller. <laughs> Okay, and then so we click the deploy button, and so now this VNF is being provisioned uh, in the OpenStack Cloud. Okay, uh, and you can see the status is active, so this VNF has been launched. Uh, if we move over to the uh, Nova portions, we can look at the instance, and we can see the vRouter here uh, is provisioned as a Nova instance, and we can get directly to the console. <laughs> We should probably disable our instant media. Yes, <laughs> lesson learned. 
Okay. Uh, so yeah, so continuing on, uh, here you can see uh, this is just the console of the vRouter that has just been provisioned through Tacker, right? Uh, and so we can log in through the CLI. We can see it's the actual brocade vRouter, okay? Uh, and, and so if you remember, we were using the BSC management driver, right? So after this thing has been spawned, uh, it should have been mounted as a, as a netconf device within the open daylight controller. So this is the, the GUI for the Brocade SDN controller. And we can just go ahead and log in to the controller. And once we log in, there should be two applications available here. So there's a topology manager, which we can take a look at first. Uh, and this will just show us the, the current topology of NetConf devices that have been mounted. And you can see there's one uh, NetConf device there. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see that's the, the vRouter that we just launched through Tacker. Okay? Um, so this vRouter is now available through Open Daylight, through applications to configure and manage. And we can go back to uh, the beginning. And so we have this other application here called the vRouter Firewall Configurator. Uh, and this is essentially just a quick little uh, kind of demo uh, application that is used to basically push down a firewall configuration onto that VNF instance. Uh, in reality, you may have your own application or automation uh, from a higher level orchestrator that may automate, you know, pushing some sort of configuration onto this VNF. Uh, here we're just, you know, very simple demo. Uh, we can go to the configurator and select the device we want to push the firewall configuration onto. Uh, and then you can see it's successfully been uh, created. So now if we go back over to the console on our VNF and we look at the running configuration, uh, you can see there is indeed now a firewall configuration on the vRouter itself. Okay. Um, and so the other feature that I wanted to talk about was the, the monitoring, right? So basically we have that block or that uh, ping monitor going on in the background. Um, so in order to simulate a failure of this particular VNF, I'm just going to uh, disable the management interface. And I'll just do that by applying that particular firewall rule, which is a, a block ICMP rule. I'm going to apply that rule to the management interface on this vRouter. Uh, and so once that happens, basically the, the attacker will no longer be able to monitor this VNF. It will detect that it has failed. Uh, and in a second, you should see that this, uh, once, it, once it has been failed, it will uh, destroy this VNF and it will respawn it once again. Um, so here I'm committing the action. Uh, and in a second or two, OK, you can see, so this, this VNF has been destroyed. And if we move over to the, the VNF manager section again, we can see this VNF has been marked as dead, OK? So now Tacker in the background is going to respawn this instance uh, and create a new one for us. Uh, and you can see the status is already in the active state. So it's already provisioning this new VNF. Uh, and again, if we go to the instances tab, we can see there is now a new instance of the vRouter that has been created. And you, again, we can go to the console, and we can see that it's, been, it's, uh, it's booting up right now. Okay. Uh, so we can log in. We can see that it's been successfully reprovisioned uh, on, uh, after a failure. Uh, and then it would be obviously remounted back on the SDN controller as well. Okay. So that, that's basically it for the first demo. We have one more quick demo. Um, so that was basically a very simple VNF that we provisioned. Uh, and this case is going to be a, a slightly more complex one. So in this case, we're going to provision a virtual Evolve packet core. Okay? And I won't get into all the details on the architecture of uh, VEPC. But uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different components to it. There's actually seven different VDUs that we'll be provisioning through Tacker. Um, so there's things like an element manager, a session database, et cetera. Uh, so seven VDUs plus an additional one for the EMS or the management system. Um, so moving along, you kind of go through the same process, right? You log into the OpenStack dashboard and um, go to the VNF catalog. And here we can onboard our VEPC uh, template. Okay. So just to take a look at the template really quick before we onboard it. Uh, you can see here there's actually, 
right? Similar to before, except in this case, there is a separate section for each of the individual eight VDUs, okay? Um, so this is actually you know, a slightly longer uh, descriptor. If we drill into one of the VDUs, in this case VDU2, uh, we can see kind of data uh, unique or specific for each VDU in this particular template. Uh, and there's a user data section here uh, which basically passes some uh, script to this instance upon instantiation. Uh, and this will basically configure it for its particular role in the VEPC architecture. Okay. So this is our template. We can go ahead and then onboard this into the catalog. We can give it a name. We'll select the template file we just took a look at. Okay. And again, this template is being stored in the attacker database. Uh, so now if a user wants to provision an instance of this uh, packet core, we can go to the VNF manager. And we can go ahead and deploy this VNF. And in this case, there's no parameterized values or any configuration files. So it's just that single Tosca template that we initially looked at. So we'll just select that template from the list and click on Deploy. OK. So Tacker is now converting a portion of that Tosca's template into a heat template so that uh, OpenStack can handle it. You can see it's in a pending, pending create mode right now. Uh, if we go to the heat section within the dashboard, the orchestration section, um, we can take a look at all the different resources that are actually being provisioned now. You can see there's a, a stack that's in the process of being created. And if we drill down into that stack, you can see, uh, initially you see the GUI representation of all the different resources being provisioned. Uh, and then you can take a look at the individual resources. And you can see at this point, pretty much all of the different resources have been provisioned already. There's just one uh, lagging on a little bit here. Uh, but so while that one's uh, still being created, we can take a look at the network topology in Liberty. Uh, so we have the new network topology GUI that's available in Liberty. Um, so if we look at that, go to the network and network topology. And here you can see all the instances of this uh, of all packet core that have been created. So there's a different instances, uh, all eight of them uh, attached to their appropriate networks within the OpenStack cluster. Okay. Okay. And if we go back to the VNF manager, you can actually see that this instance is in an active state. So this Evolve Packet Core, uh, according to this, has been successfully provisioned within the OpenStack cloud using Tacker. So I'm just going to run a validate deploy script here, which is basically going to open up a term window into six of these VDUs. Uh, and just, I'm just going to log in and basically validate that this has been successfully provisioned through Tacker. Um, so I just connect. Uh, there's a validate deploy script available, so I'm just going to run this on each of them. And what we should see is basically, uh, basically green, uh, showing that this has been successfully provisioned, uh, and this, uh, each VNFC is uh, in an active state and ready to be used as a packet core. Okay, and it just takes a second. Okay. So everything is green, everything is ready, everything looks good. There's one final detail we can just take a look at, and that is to log into the GUI EMS app of the uh, Packet Core solution. Um, so we can connect to that over a web browser. And if everything is successful, basically we should see that this EMS app has uh, successfully uh, discovered each of the different VNFCs as part of this whole VNF. Um, and it is able to successfully monitor them and, and view their state. So you can see uh, on the left in the orange tab, you can see seven VNFCs, uh, and it lists each of them uh, below. OK. So uh, that's basically it for the two demos. I'll hand it back over to Sridhar for uh, any closing. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Jeff, uh, uh, for the demo. I uh, just want to leave the screen uh, back to this. So 
So the value here, I don't know if we can move back. So uh, if we can get the slides. Oh, the slides? Yeah. So, uh, so con instantiating a VEPC is, is usually a very, very eye touch thing. Like it involves a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of VNFs to be, VMs to be instantiated. Here the power of uh, tacker and templatizing is to, you can write that once and you can instantiate uh, any number of times. So uh, Tacker can, again, maintain a collection of uh, VMs, both simple and complex, uh, and it can instantiate in a push button format. So, that, so that, that's the, uh, the goal for Tacker. So in conclusion, um, so, so the fe features that you saw uh, here are mostly geared from a, a VNFM point of view. Uh, but we are actually adding a lot more features uh, moving to the NFEO area as well. In, in fact, it, it's actually complementary where currently uh, Tacker is instantiating only in the same VM. VIM. We are actually uh, removing that restriction and uh, introducing an ability to instantiate VNFs in any different, any target uh, OpenStack uh, controller, any target VIM. Uh, and we have a few other features. Oh, there you go. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, so, and beyond that, SFC, service function chaining, is a widely asked uh, feature uh, beyond a simple VNF manager. So the, the, that's where a lot of interest, so we are actually introducing uh, the SFC APIs in Tacker uh, uh, in, in, the, in the next upcoming cycle. The other important thing uh, for the VNF is it's not just a simple placement, it needs to be placed efficiently. So that's another thing that we're gonna take it up in the next cycle to make it uh, in a way that it's, it's optimal and it's, it's, it's in, a, uh, in a performance efficient way. And uh, eventually we also want to introduce uh, uh, network service descriptor support. This is something uh, called out in the HC manual. Uh, so I guess this is sort of the roadmap we are working towards. Uh, again, uh, I welcome anyone uh, to join uh, the community. Uh, the, this is an interesting space in this whole NFE orchestration area, and we have a lot of things to do, and uh, we, I believe we are just in the beginning phase of this whole uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, here are some information where you can uh, contribute both on the open uh, so side and you can actually reach out to some of us if you need more information on anything specific around brocade uh, VNFs or brocade SDN controller. Thank you.